Hey everyone, uh, this is Trevor here. So today we will be solving the uh, fourth problem from the SDE sheet that is merge uh, two sorted arrays without extra space. So the problem states that you will be given two sorted array and you need to sort them like 10, 2, 3 are there. So if you actually merge them and write, it will be 2, 3, 10. So the first array had a position for one element. So two will go over there and the next array had a position for two elements. So 3, 2 will go over there. So if you are in an interview, the interviewer will never tell you that sort it without using extra space. He will tell you that you have to sort two sorted arrays. So in that case, you're going to tell him in the first uh, state that you're going to use a third array, uh, let's say array three, which will have a size adding up to the size of first that is N1 and N2 over here it's five over here it's three. So you will have an array of size eight. And after that, you're going to plug all the elements from A1 into this and all the elements from A2 into this. And once you have done this, you're going to sort this array. So you will get the resultant as after you have got the sorted array, you take out the first element and place it over here. You take out the second element, you place it over here. After that, you take out the third element, you place it over here. Then you take out the fourth element, you place it over here. Similarly, the fifth element. After this, you have eight, nine, 10, but the first array is filled up. So you plug eight, nine, 10 towards the second array. So in this way, you can merge our two sorted arrays. The time complexity uh, required for such an operation will be n log n for sorting, bigo of n for putting the elements over here and one extra bigo of n for putting it back to array of one and two. And it will require an extra space of bigger of n to do it. So after this, uh, the interviewer might tell you that you cannot use any extra space. So in that case, you're going to tell this uh, insertion sort kind of algorithm. So we are not going to use any extra space. So the intuition behind the algorithm that I am going to teach you is that that both the arrays that are given to you are already sorted. So we need to take advantage of it. So what we can do is we can linearly traverse for the first array. And we see that this is one. So if this one is not greater than this, so I can surely say that this one will stay where it is. And at the next step, we see that we have four, but this four is actually greater than this two. So we know that all the elements towards the right will be greater than four and all the elements towards the right of two will be greater than two. So at this position, we should have two. So what we will do is we will move two over here and we will bring four over here. So once you have swapped it, the next task is to make this array sorted back again because the algorithm is based on the fact that both the arrays are sorted. So just uh, make this sorted back. So we know that this portion is sorted. So we pick this element and insert it at its correct position. So after inserting the array will look something like this. So the next element is seven. So we again swap three and seven. So we see that after swapping seven, the second array is not sorted. Our algorithm is again based on the fact that both the arrays should be sorted. So you just need to take the seven and place it in such a way that this array still stays sorted. In the next step, we have eight. Now we again swap four and eight. The second array is again not sorted. So we will put eight in the correct position so that it stays sorted. So the next time we get something as 10. Again, seven is smaller than 10. So we have to swap it. After this, we see that the second array is not sorted. So you have to put back 10 over here so that the array stays sorted. So after we have completed the linear traversal of the first array, we can see that we will get the desired answer that we were actually looking for. So what is the time complexity that we are using? It's big of N1 into M1, assuming that all the elements over here are greater then all the elements over here. So in that case, you have to swap it every time. And after swapping, you have to reorder it. So linear traversal over here takes N1 and reordering it takes M1. So the total complexity will be bigo of N1 into M1 while the space complexity remains as bigo of one. So the next optimal approach is to use the gap method. I actually went through a lot of books 
but I didn't find the perfect intuition for it. So what I'll do is I'll just tell you about the algorithm. I don't have the intuition just in case if anyone of you have the intuition about this gap algorithm, you can drop it in the comment section. So the gap algorithm initially takes the gap to be eight by two, where eight is the size of the entire array that is five plus three divided by two, which gives you four. So the initial gap is four. So the first pointer points over here, while the second pointer will point over here. So is a one greater than 10? No, it is not. So we will not be swapping anything. After the step, we are going to move the pointer ahead. So we see that our pointer now stands at four and the other pointer stands at two. Now four is greater than two. Now whenever you get something like this, you're going to swap it. So you have swapped it. And after swapping, you move the pointers ahead. So seven is again greater than three. So you're going to swap seven and three now. So once you have done the swapping, you move the pointers ahead. So eight is smaller than nine. So you don't swap it and you move the pointers ahead. But when you try to move the pointer ahead, this actually moves out of bound with the second array. So the first operation for the gap four is performed. Now it's time to perform the next gap operation. So the next gap that we are going to take will be four by two. That is two. So the first pointer now stands over here and the second pointer now stands over here. So again, one is smaller than three. So we don't do anything and we move the pointers ahead. At the next time we see that two is still uh, lesser than eight. So we don't do anything and we move the pointers ahead. At the next time we see that three is again smaller than 10. So we don't do anything and we move the pointers ahead. Now you see that eight is greater than four. Now, whenever you see something like this, you're going to swap it. So once you have swapped it, uh, you're going to move the pointers ahead again. Now again, 10 is greater than seven. So you're going to swap 10 and seven. So seven and 10 has been swapped. You move the pointer ahead. Now eight is again smaller than nine. So you don't perform any swap and you move the pointers ahead. Now the next step, you see that the pointer has moved outside the second array. So you're going to stop. So the operations for one has been performed. So for the next time we will perform the operation for gap equal to two by two, that is one. So let's perform the operation for one. So the pointer first points to one and the second pointer points to two. So they will not be swapping and we move the pointer ahead. And the next time we see that two and three will again not swap. So we move the pointers ahead. And the next time we see that again, three and four will not swap. So we move the pointers ahead. Four and seven will not swap. Let's move the pointers ahead. Seven and eight, no swap. Move the pointers ahead. Eight and 10, no swap. Move the pointers ahead. 10 and nine, yes, there will be a swap between 10 and nine. So just swap it. So after swapping, you move the pointers ahead and we move out of boundary. Uh, remember one thing, whenever we reach one, that is the moment we are going to stop. Hence, we can easily say that we have the array one as this and we have the array two as this. So for this problem, N one is four and N two is three. So we have a total uh, size of seven, but what will be the initial gap that we start off with? The initial gap will be the total size is seven. So seven by two. Now remember one thing, Whenever there will be a remainder, so you'll always take the ceiling like seven by two would have been three, but you take the gap as four. Just remember this stuff. So the time complexity for this method will be the number of times. Uh, so the time complexity for this method will be the number of times you perform the gap operations that will be logarithmic uh, base two n. The reason is uh, we are dividing the numbers by two. So we are going to perform logarithmic uh, base to n times operations. And for every operations, we are linearly iterating, right? So at worst case, it will be B go of O n. So I can say we have an algorithm at n log n and at an auxiliary space of B go of one. So if you are in an interview, what I will suggest you from my side is you need to tell the sorting algorithm at first. And then if the interview asks you to perform it in B go of one space, then you tell that insertion sort algorithm that we did. And after that, if he wants some other algorithm, just in case if he wants, that means he wants this algorithm because throughout the internet, there's only this algorithm, which is better than the insertion sort algorithm. So you're going to tell him this. And I'm very sure that he'll not be asking the intuition behind it because this is an algorithm which pre exists. So in the previous video, a lot of people had this complaint that I didn't uh, explain the code. Now, the reason I stopped explaining the code was I want you guys to write the code by self. That is when you will learn because you know the algorithm, the implementation part. If you do it by your own, then the algorithm and the implementation stays in your mind for a longer time rather than just following my code blindly, because what that will do is that will kill your implementation skills. So you should uh, try on your own. 
And if you're not able to do, I've given the links in the description. You can check out the code from that link. I hope you have understood the entire explanation. So just in case you did, make sure you like the video. And also if you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe it. And along with that, press that bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. With that said, I wrap up the video. Let's meet in the next lecture where I will be solving the fifth problem from the SDE sheet.